Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this new baby card. For this one I've used um, pearl, pa uh, pearl Party rather, and the designer series paper comes from the Petal Garden designer series paper stack. I've also made one in powder pink, girly one, and these two papers come from a um, whole lot of lovely designer series paper and I for the video I'm going to do a blue one another boy one and this time I'm using designer series paper called naturally eclectic so I'll start off by telling you the card pieces that you'll need so the card base is whisper white and it measures eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches, which is 21 by 14.5 centimeters, scored and folded in the center. And then you'll need two pieces of pool party that measure four inches by five and five eighths inches, which is 10.25 centimeters by 14.25 centimeters. And then you need a piece of designer series paper which measures three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches which is 10 by 14 centimeters you'll need a piece of whisper white cardstock which measures three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches which is 10 by 14 which is just the same size as this one and then you'll need a piece of Wisp White and a piece of Pool Party, both of which measure approximately two and a half inches by two and a half inches, which is 6.5 by 6.5 centimeters. Then you'll need two pieces of Pool Party, both which are one inch wide, one which is about three inches long, and one that is four and three quarter inches long. That looks a lot, lot longer than that should be against that, but they're right. Um, and the metric sizes on this, the 1 by 3 is 2.5 by 7.5 centimetres. And the 1 by 4 and 3 quarter inches is 2.5 by 12 centimetres. And then you need a piece of designer series paper for... Um, the elephant and you need two of those because there's one inside and also for the sentiment um, so this is about six and a half inches by two inches so to start off with we'll do the stamping first so that is on that and that that so that's that one that I think that's it, isn't it? I'm going to use um, black archival ink, and the two stamp sets I'm using for the elephant. I'm using a wild, a little wild. Um, this is an absolutely delightful stamp set. Um, one of the reasons for doing a video on this set is because the stamp is that. It is one complete stamp, um, but you don't have to use it as such. You can use just one. The reason it's two like that is because it's got a coordinating set of dies, which is called Little Loves. And when you stamp the double, it you can die cut the double as well, and then it folds in half there's a little hole on each of them so that you can put some cord through it to make them into little gift tags and in the stamp set here you've got a to and a from as well um, which I think is absolutely brilliant you've also got dies for the bees which although it's one die they do die cut separately you've got one for the flower as well and you've also got this which makes a very um, it's a gorgeous um, uh, decoration strip. Um, in the catalogue, I think it is 
uh, stamping up a foot of card where they've done several strips going across. It really does look nice. It was tone on tone, really super. Right, so I need to turn these over so I don't do it on the wrong sides. And let's do the elephant first. So the way that I do this so that I only get one elephant, I need two on DSP, I need one on the cardstock here and one here. And you, the reason I do a stamp on there and a stamp on there, even though I'm going to be doing it on here and cutting these by hand, if you cut these a little bit short, it doesn't matter if you've already stamped it down there because the black line will, the black line you've cut off of here will st still show through onto here. I hope that makes sense. Um, let's make a start. Right, so what I do is I take a piece of tape and when I close my tape down on this particular one, I always fold the end back. It's not so much to save the place, but it's for when I've stamped this, it makes it nice and easy to pull this bit off. Okay, so I just tear that, fold that off so it's ready for next time. Make sure that I've put this on just to cover up the stamp I don't want. I also get ready for myself a scrap of paper. Okay, so I've got a used grid sheet here. Let's move my good cards out of the way, my completed cards, just in case I get clumsy with the ink. Right, so what I'm going to do is, I've covered up this, I'm going to ink this one. And I'm going to stamp on here first. Now I need to remove this, so because I folded that back, that's nice and handy. And because I've got that ready, I've got something to stick that straight down on. Okay, let me see if I can get all of that into one screen. Right, let me stamp this one before it dries off. This I'm going to do straight in the centre. Okay, looks like I've got a little bit of a mark there, but that's so tiny I'm not going to worry about that. So that one's done. Now I need to do one in the corner of this. Okay, so I've got my folded bit. That goes down nice and easily. Tear this one off and then fold that over. So ink. Take my tape off and just pop it down on there. And now I'm just going to come over in the side here. Let's see if I just pop that over in case I've got any dirty bits. Mind you, that was too close actually. If I've got something in the same place, this isn't going to save it. Oh no, I wonder if that was there already. Well, we'll find out later. So this one then, I need two on here. There is something else I want to show you about these as well, which I will do in a moment. In fact, I'm only going to do one of these because I have done one and already cut it out by hand. Okay, so get that, get rid of that one. There we go. So that's those bits done. I'm going to get rid of that quickly because that ink on the tape stays quite wet for quite some time. Now the other bit of stamping I need to do is for this sentiment which is Welcome Baby. So I'm going to put this on here. But would it fit that way? Don't chance it. But this size would obviously be the right size for two elephants and that.
Right, now I've got to cut that out and cut that out, but before I do, I want to show you about this elephant. Look at the eyes. This is what the stamp does. Okay, that's what the stamp's done on these. But I don't like the elephant with closed eyes. So I've woken him up and I'm going to show you how I do that. You may be quite happy with the eyes closed, that's fine. I'm using my basic black marker pen and I'm using the pen, uh, the pen end, the thin end. Easier to see on there, isn't it? And all I do is I draw a half circle above his closed eyes. And then I just colour in like that. Just make sure that wherever you draw those darker bits, they're both facing the same way. Um, otherwise you'll finish up with a cross-eyed elephant. And then for this, I also do a little sideways C for his eyebrows. To me, that makes so much difference. I think it looks really lovely. Obviously, you don't need to do these because this is going to cover this up. And this is the one I did earlier, and I've already done him. At this point, I'm just going to... Um, tell you about these two as well because these come with just dots and I changed well I haven't done that one yet but I'm going to show you what I do with this and then I'm going to do the same with that so we're both going to learn at the same time what this one looks like so what I do with this is I curve round underneath the curve and I make it come round into a circle and then I colour that in start round at the base of the circle, come round and colour it in. Now we're going to be doing this in our classes on at the weekend and I will be telling my ladies to try stamping several times on their scrap paper and having a practice doing this before they go on to their correct ones. Now as I say I haven't done the lines before so this is very much a learning curve but I don't see why it shouldn't work. Right, okay, so he's going to be looking the other end at the bear. Not very good, but you can see it works. I think that looks a lot better. And I don't know what, I haven't done this one with eyebrows yet. So, yeah. Definitely. I certainly prefer them like that. Just a thought, if um, you watched any of my videos last Christmas, you'll know that um, I made a few changes to uh, Father Christmas as well. Um, one of his, I amputated his ears because I didn't like what it looked like. Um, what happened? I think, if I remember correctly, when I put his hood on, his ears were showing through and they shouldn't. Or at least I don't think they should. So I amputated his ears. And again, I thought he looked lovely. Now I cut on here just around all the black lines. If I make a mistake, I prefer to cut too much black off rather than leaving any of the blue on. Then that way when I adhere this onto the um, stamped elephant, the black bits on the stamped one will show through where I've missed the black on here. And I know something else I haven't done as well. I do like to, um, whether it's a boy or a girl, I do like to do the toenails. 
I just go over those with a um, smoky slate marker pen. Okay, so that's the elephant. And again with this, welcome baby. I cut right on the black line. If I miss, then I'd much rather cut off too much black. There's a little blue bit there that I've left. The cardstock and this designer series paper that I'm using is actually um, Soft Sky but the ribbon that I'll be using will be Pool Party. Um, the two colours go together amazingly well. You can interchange with them. Right, so let me just do his toenails. This one I'd already done, done his eyes. So I'm going to adhere him on here. Don't forget, if you squeeze too much Tom Tom, uh, Tom Tom, here we go, <laughs> um, Tombow, if you squeeze too much Tombow out, just blot your paper, your image onto a piece of um, scrap paper. There we go. that one. This is a lovely technique, this paper piecing. So that's that. So what we need to do now is the die cutting. So I'll bring my big shot up. Make sure you're in shot here. So I need those two. The dies I'm using for the soft sky piece I'm going to be using the no I'm not for the white piece I'm going to be using my stitched shapes framelits in this you get 12 dies 4 squares, 4 ovals, 4 circles and then for the blue one I'm going to be using our layering squares which you get 10 scalloped squares and 9 straight cut squares. I'm using number 7 of the scallops which means it's the 7th starting from number from the smallest. Smaller the die, smaller the number. Right, and now this is the stitched one. These framelits have been so popular ever since Stamping Up bought them out. I think it was last November. They weren't going to come out until the new catalogue on the 1st of June. Um, but fortunately Stamping Up bought them out earlier. Right, 
Right, so there's our elephant. And there's our scallop circle, a uh, scallop square. Okay, so if I get rid of the rubbish, put the two dies back over that side. Put my big shot back, and then I think all we need to do is to put the card together. So let's do the inside first because that's the easy bit. I will be putting all the measurements in the box below the video where you see the two little arrows. If you press the second one, it'll open up a big box and you'll find all the measurements and the products that I've used in there. You'll also find a link for my 24-7 online stamping up shop as well. I don't know if that's a mark that I can get off there. Let me just see if I can get my adhesive eraser. Nope, that's a shame. Normal eraser. Oops, that's a shame. Well, that's nearly done it. This is a new eraser, or it's not new, it's new to me. Um, a friend of mine in Canada, she told me about it. It's by the same people who make good old Tom Bow. Look, it's gone. Um, it's a sand and rubber eraser. And if you've got minor accidents um, getting ink onto your work, this will erase it. That is a very, very gritty eraser, that bit. And then that is just to smooth off your work once you've done it. It won't remove big splodges of ink. But you know those little ones, well, little ones like that. You saw how um, that one came off. And let me concentrate for a minute. Um, if you've, you know you how you, sometimes you get ink on your fingers and you just happen to touch something and it leaves a light inky finger mark, it will remove things like that. It's absolutely superb. Um, so I say a very big thank you to my friend Geraldine in Canada for telling me about it. Right, so there's that. Um, that's going to go on that one, isn't it? As you can see, that sheet's been used for something else. When I first made, when I made the first card, I thought I had done wrong in as much as I'd adhered these three layers together, the card base and the top two layers, before I'd put my ribbon on it because I thought the ribbon should have gone over these two sheets. But when I made the second one and I tried that, it really wasn't necessary. So I don't worry about it now. I am going to put this one on here. it will stick because that's going over something shiny. Only one way to find out.
Did I say that this designer series paper is from Naturally Eclectic? I don't know whether I did or not, but it is. Okay, so now we can put these two together. Right now, for my banner, let me show you where's my, I think it's clearer to see on this blue one. I've fishtailed the end and the easy way of doing it is by using our triple banner punch. It's one inch wide so it will just slide straight in there. And you just slide it right to the end like that, punch and it's perfect. I know that you can just get a pair of scissors cut in the centre and then cut that way. Um, it's okay as long as you do actually cut in the centre. Um, as you know, me and straight lines are not the best of friends. Now this one also I need to sellotape onto. In fact, I should really stamp this one first, shouldn't I? Otherwise I'm not sticking to what I say. If I've cut anything short on here, if I haven't stamped it, then it's not going to uh, cover up. There we go. Oh, you silly person. I know what I should have done. I, what I wanted to do... Oh, no, that's right, that's right. I thought I hadn't cut it small enough. But it all comes right when I punch this out. In fact, I'll show you what I mean now. So, I'm going to use this punch. I'm not quite sure what it's called. Banner punch or something. Um, as I said, I'll have all the names, correct names in the bottom. So I'm just going to cut this from down here, pop it in, line it up. And it would have been helpful if I'd left a larger piece on there. Okay, show you what we do when we make that silly mistake. So where I said you need three inches for this, you need it a bit longer. So what I'm going to do is put a handle on it. Right, this is uh, the removal tape, it's not a stamping up product. Let's try that again. Now that that's in there, I can move it around quite easily. The thing is, there isn't much gap there between what I've cut out and what the punch is going to do. Oh, I've got a bit of paper stuck in there, that's why I'm struggling with it. Never mind. It's done it reasonably well. Let me show you this one, because this one didn't play me up. If you see how close 
my hand cut piece is against the punched piece. You can see it better at the ends, at the fishtail bits, but as it goes on the curved bit, top and bottom, there isn't much on the cardstock showing through. So that's normal. So for my ribbon, I'm using the 3 8 of an inch pool party, uh, what is this called, shimmer ribbon. So I'm just going to take a piece that's that sort of length and my ribbon scissors. I think this will probably be about seven inches. I will tell you properly. Oh, six and a half. More than enough. Probably get away with five and a half. So what I do to fishtail this is at the end I fold it in half and then I hold it like that and then with my ribbon scissors I cut at a slight angle. I don't go too far otherwise the point on it is seriously too pointed. Okay that's a nice little point and that is sort of the same sort of point as that one. The first one I did, it was far, far too pointed and it looked so silly. Now to adhere this on, I'm going to use my snail. Just put a bit at the top there because I'm going to fold it over. And I'm just going to eyeball this to get it straight. You're nowhere near straight, is it? <laughs> is that any better? Mm, much better. Not perfect. But I don't think I'll worry too much about it because you don't actually see too much of it. Right, so I'm going to pop that bit over. Now I'm going to adhere this to my card and what I'm doing is I'm going to line this so that that line goes through the centre. You can't see this bit at the bottom, can you? No, you can't. But I'm using the bottom ruler here to make sure that that is the centre point. extra on the ribbon, just make sure that doesn't work its way out. And I don't worry about putting any glue on that part of the ribbon either. I really don't think that that'll, there'll be any problems with that. Okay, so now I know that is the centre. Lift this up so it looks straight. I think that's okay. Right now, just to adhere the other two, this one and this, I'm going to use our mini glue dot, uh, not glue dots, mini. Um, dimensionals. Again, they were here a moment ago. I've just been using them. Okay, get another sheet. You can see I've done it before because I started a second sheet already. Right, now on this I want to put dimensionals on this side and this side because I want them to go either side of the um, ribbon here. So making sure I keep it up the right way, I'm going to put three down either side. So one top, bottom, middle. Ah, 
and then on this I'm going to put three on there as well. These um, small dimensionals are absolutely brilliant. I mean, previously I would have used big ones on this banner, um, used three of them, but as you can see, it doesn't really need them. So thank you, stepping up for these. removed all the backings. So first of all I'm going to put this one on. Just a little way down. And then I'll do this one. straight and something else I've forgotten to do as well I wonder if I can do it from here I doubt it on here I colored in the letters and I used a marker pen for that I used the thin end oh, yes I can or maybe not I can't get enough pressure on there I'm not going to try doing this on camera because I'm going to need to just dip that into ink to do it um, so that I don't have to put too much pressure on it but that's what I did um, when I put a photograph of this um, on the on my blog when I'm talking about the video having been uploaded um, you'll see that I have I will have done it by then um, so I think that's probably about it, isn't it? I've done everything, done his toes, toes, eyes, eyes. And it was only that that I've forgotten. So I hope you liked today's project. I hope you liked the tips about putting eyes on if you like to put some eyes on. Um, and also how to use these as a single stamp. Not having to use both of them if you don't want to. I will be doing another project at some stage using these as tags. Um, I have a um, envelope punch board box that I'm going to be making. Um, again, something else we're doing for class this weekend. So do pop back, come and see how I get on with that one. Um, so many thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions or any comments to make, please leave them in the box below um, or you can email me at jambi at jambicards.com. I'm always very happy to help you. If you'd like to purchase any of the products that I featured here, uh, there will be a link to my 24-7 shop in the uh, box below. Below the video you'll see there's two small arrows. Um, if you click on the second one, that opens up um, the box and it'll have... The other thing is I'll put in there all the measurements and the products that I've used. Um, so it's all nice and handy for you all in one place. Um, and finally, if you've enjoyed my vid video and you would like to be notified each time I upload another one, which is normally Wednesdays and Sundays, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.